I feel the spectrum of love being tested, but um, we are determined. Okay. Oops. I knocked over the magical piñata. Bienvenidos. We are on day two of our journey of building a computer table. I'm really excited to have a workstation, a powerhouse, a uh, uh, dandelion horse. Because of our first episode, I am now totally going to take things very slowly. Um, patience. I am still a Padawan at this and in many other areas of my life. It's, it's first of February. It's also the Lunar New Year. So, year of the tiger right here. One goblin to another when you're in your little cave and you've got all the things that you want to do. You got to be selective of what it is that you are going to do. And I would rather spend my time building a computer table. Speaking of goblin stuff for like a second, you gotta see this. This is the cutest thing. I got a late Christmas present. Came in the mail late, but my, my parents got it for me. Sorry, Santa. Look at this. It's a little... It's a little keychain. It's a little keychain for my, for my backpack. My hamburger backpack. But it says Goose. Because that's me. Uh, we need a theme for today. We need to unpack something or pack it back in. Maybe, maybe not pack it back in. Let's check the magical piñata and see what today's we're going to accomplish. All right, here it is. A spectrum of love. What a better theme for cool goblin shit. Yeah, I guess I could talk about queer identity. Um, only pers from a personal perspective though. I'm on that spectrum and you can't, you can't, not everybody's experience will encompass everyone's. It's exciting, I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> um, well, I could talk about a music video that I just did. Um, I'm really proud of this video. It's kind of like a coming out video, being like, I'm gender fluid, which is what I am. So, I'm not sure how this is going to relate to the table, um, the computer table, and I think that that video is kind of like, it's kind of it. That's, that's it. That's what it was always leading up to, and that's what it was. The problem was, when I, when I wrote the music for that song, it was in 2019, and I didn't release the video until literally like 30 days ago, 32 days ago. And that's because the pandemic really kind of got in the way of me actually getting that video out. If not, that video probably would have come out and me out um, probably a lot sooner about that. Uh, but yeah, pandemic really got in the way of that. Couldn't produce it the way I wanted to. And so I'm glad I waited, really, to be honest. I hope it's inspiring or at least enjoyable at the very least. Um, yeah, I'm confident to talk about it now. I uh, wasn't so much confident to talk about it back then. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> and I do attribute a lot of that to I was just showing the hamburger basket. I, w I do attribute that. Maybe we could talk about Steven Universe. Let me just, let me get all the fans up in here. Finally having what it was, Steven Universe kind of gave me the language or the vocabulary to understand what I had been feeling. And we look at all the, you know, I actually wrote it. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull some theory on you. All right, check this out. Oh, it's upside down. Okay, you know, you know where I'm going with this. So I wrote a paper last year, it's like 20 some pages, and it's about Life is Strange, because it's like literally my favorite thing. And anyway, in relation to Steven Universe, uh, I was drawing a connection between queer experiences and identity and representation uh, and the horror genre. This is the paper. I actually kind of want to do a video on it. I kind of want to just do a solo video of me like reading this, like Jacob Geller. 
That would be really cool. So I have a moment in here that I wrote and I referenced to Steven Universe because why not? And my instructor seemed to really like it. I referenced to, in my paper, kind of what I'm talking about, having the vocabulary to then be able to unpack and understand other things, which I tied it into Life is Strange, because Max is bi. And, and because this is a video game, I'm talking about video game theory and also talking about... How do I... I need to re... Uh, I'm combining the horror genre and horror theory in queer representation uh, with video game theory. I'm using that vocabulary of Steven Universe in order to draw a connection between how gameplay is the sphere in which the player crosses the boundary of immersion, suddenly the player is the main character, the player is a woman trapped in a gothic narrative. That's kind of cool. And my partner helped me with that. The fictional character Garnet from the series Steven Universe is an excellent metaphor for this concept, just as she is a metaphor for queer sexuality and identity for a narrative TV fiction. She is the literal fusion of two completely separate identities who choose to become a new shared identity, or as she describes it in the show, and I quote, you are not two people, and you are not one person. You are an experience. <laughs> With that, I have just made the spectrum of love. I put it in a very heady space and into a paper. That's not very feelings-based. That is, um... See, I see that as tangible way of using vocabulary to thus understand experience, which is the whole point of what I was saying with me getting introduced to Steven Universe that allowed me to then understand my experience using that vocabulary, which is why I feel blessed. A shout out to the instructor that introduced me to Steven Universe back in like 2017. Well, I don't, I actually don't remember their name but they basically said it was an assignment. I wrote a script and they were like, wow, this is really interesting. It kind of sounds like Steven Universe. And I was like, what's that? And they were like, you don't know what that is. Shame on you. Not really, not really shame. But they said, I have an assignment and the assignment is go and watch the first two episodes of Steven Universe and just see how you feel about it. Maybe it'll help with your script at the time, whatever. And just kept watching it and then I just kept watching it and I would watch it all the time in the library because that's where there was Wi-Fi and privacy. Obviously, Steven Universe was a stepping stone to other spaces that I then was able to revisit and go, oh yeah, I get that book. I get that now. There are several other things. It's not just Steven Universe, um, but it really was a good kind of like a key star to opening that door to me discovering what was already inside. Well, you'll see. And it, you'll see, it's kind of boring. It's really just me putting measurements and putting stuff on it. Without further ado... Speaking of lunch, um, as I fold some laundry here, I remembered this morning I watched a spider eat another spider. It was like a little baby spider that kicked this other big spider's ass. It was so cool to see this like spider underneath the oven, just like, like a wrestling match. But you know, the big spider, it was a really good lesson, you know? The big spider obviously was too big for the little spider's webs, right? It was like a trap. And the big spider got tangled really fast into the little baby spider's webs. And you know, the little baby spider just kept coming back at it and just, you know? When the spider was totally incapacitated, the baby spider lowered the big one onto the ground, went back up into its little web, rebuilt the infrastructure, then like tied it like a piñata, and like lifted it up like, like this, you know? Like, lifted it up. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Seeing that spider just, just get wrecked. Yeah, I hope she enjoys her lunch, that little, that spider. But I mean, that's, that's the very chaotic nature of life, if you call it chaotic for bugs. If you want to be a successful spider, you gotta have a good web. And by that I mean a good foundation. This goblin spider goose is going to make a foundation. See how I'm trying to connect it? <laughs> I couldn't find a pencil, but 
I did find this twistable uh, colored pencil thing. The thing we need today, is it recording? <laughs> so the reason why um, I am building the table like this is because I'm going to hide the uh, computer parts on the inside of the table, right? So the computer parts would hide where my hand disappeared. Does that make sense? It'll be a little computer box that's just huge because it's a table. So first things first, I need to basically line up where I'm gonna screw this in. But I'm using a 12 millimeter quarter of an inch uh, countersink that I'm going to drew that I'm going to countersink all these holes at. But I'm going to make the holes with a one and an eighth inch drill just to kind of get them started. Like I said, pretty much all of this is being taken off of that one video by the DIY dude. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it. And of course, I'm also formatting it to my specifications. So, you know, if you get as, um, if you want to make your own computer table, you know, make sure you adjust it and your expectations. Let's start putting this together. Already I feel like very meditative. <laughs> I feel the love that I'm putting into this table, uh, taking it a step at a time and um, I guess really kind of zoning into it. It's time to countersink uh, so that the screws will fit flush. I'm going to disconnect the drill before I remove the drill bit because it has potential to go off otherwise and while I'm pulling the bit off I could take a bit off of my finger. <laughs> Get it? A cool jump cut kind of thing where I'm like going like boop 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 boop. I probably shouldn't have been out here in my my chanclas and socks. Um, yeah, I forgot about all the sawdust. The uh, countersunk hole, I realized I didn't need it that deep and probably because the screws themselves are pretty much flathead so they pretty much go in anyway. But you know, just showing the process here. So as you can see the wood is actually split there because when I did my first cut where it was at an angle because I thought I was going to do that angled 45 degree thing that didn't work out. Yeah, anyways, it's caused the wood to split because it was so weak and I was screwing it at an angle that didn't work. So it's also sticking out here a little bit because of that. So this is the part I'm saying I need to fix to shave off so that the other piece can fit here so that we can seal it up. So I'm going to do that now. I feel the spectrum of love being tested, but um, we are determined. Bingo! The weather has changed dramatically because that winter air is coming through. In that time that uh, I was able to kind of fix the corner here, we can see, I have finished one side of the table. Of course, this box is going to have threaded insert screws so that the bottom can always be removed just in case I need to tweak something. So this is the side that doesn't need access. It can always stay locked into place, which is why they are screwed in without threaded inserts. Thank you for joining me, Goose, um, on another episode of the spectrum of experiencing love in all its forms whether it be through tablecraft or through 
relationships, making breakfast, or doing laundry. See you in the next episode. So. Drilling holes into my brain.